So you know, uh, I was amazed by the song sing by the uh, uh, Lea Siman Juntak because there is one more key thin red line on the words and the uh, lyrics of the We Are the World. It's, uh, it's you know, uh, it's just to make a better day just for you and me. It's one quite uh, very pertinent to our uh, theme uh, on the uh, global stability. Uh, in the uh, uh, uncertain dynamic geopolitics. So, well, I think uh, it is a kind of the moral message from, from the, uh, our forum uh, today that the, uh, uh, all everything, well, what we are uh, 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 stressing out uh, uh, by the song uh, of the Ibu Mbak Lea Siman Juntak, there is uh, um, uh, something that is very interesting. Uh, we are attaching to our uh, theme now. So, okay, so Balia, thank you so much. Uh, uh, let me uh, start by the uh, summary of our forum today. Uh, Vice Governor, Lieutenant General, Sabar uh, Fadila, uh, Deputy Princip uh, uh, Principal Secret General Secretary, Commissioner General Purwadi, and then Deputy uh, for uh, Strategic Study, Professor Reni Mayerni and distinguished speakers, resource persons, and uh, moderators. Uh, it is very uh, interesting, and what we have now, uh, having long been discussion during these two days forum, um, we have learned some important insight to take into consideration as a, a prominent issue relevant to our uh, geopolitical uh, geopolitics in maritime sphere, uh, which is becoming a very important and very significant now. So uh, um, I just want to stress out the importance of what uh, we call as the uh, real politics and uh, contested world uh, has already been coming whereby uh, geopolitics dynamic in maritime space uh, tends to be a determinant factor of the global stability uh, as a power competition at recent times getting harder and harder. Uh, but the problem is now how do we can navigate the global turbulence and how could we absorb it and then transform it into uh, our strategic stability having uh, responded through our forum during these two days. With me, uh, I have some notes of idea and thought uh, has been shared uh, by resource person speaker uh, in many diverse perspectives that would be recommendable. So, in particular, uh, in challenging maritime geopolitics. So, by then, uh, let me highlight, therefore, uh, a couple of notes about uh, the development of maritime geopolitics throughout the sessions uh, from yesterday until now, today, in which some part which has been touching upon with the following stressing. Number one, uh, a world system confronts global norms in hegemonic transition. So the world system is uh, recently characterized by spatial uh, interlinking hegemonic powers that dominates the divine global norms. Underlying rhythm of competition for uh, accumulating power politics to a single hegemony would be uh, inevitable things which would mislead our world system into derailed uh, international order. Reinforcing the international rule base is very necessary, therefore, to conduct under common understanding and good governance at these terms. At this stage, from a world system perspective, the rise of China as a challenger to declining United States appears to mark the benign power beginning of a new cyclical transition phase from one global hegemon to another. Secondly, the return of classical geopolitics with autonomous technology in expansive threats spectrum. Power dominance in military in the new Cold War between great powers in the mixed strategy by proxy over the others in the era of Geo5 on uh, connectivity and supply chain. I think this would set aside of international framework for law and order as well as peace between countries and endangers the independence, 
sovereignty and territorial integrity of all countries. More developed, larger, more advanced of China's technology is yet unacceptable to the U.S. and its ally, which is still dominant military power. Nuclear capability would be cautious, calculated measure that may justify growing tension of power competition, spreading out its impact to other countries. No single narrative converge or uh, standardized uh, for such nuclear proliferation for somewhat it refers to considerable deterrence of active defense. It might have an even bigger equilibrium uh, heading into dangerous directions. Once we subscribe, once we subscribe to non-proliferation policy, too much of foreign policy seems to be making the case of foreign of proliferation. Thirdly, strategic competition for strategic hegemony. Uh, maritime has been generated as a space of power competition between great powers. Excessive power projection would potentially be inevitable against opponents, rivals, competitors that may lead to extensive win-lose game. But it is a challenge we most of countries not fall into disorder or anarchy. The U.S.-China rivalry would roll coast manipulative economic globalization terms that may blur one to another against each geopolitical backdrop. Yet, power competition between these two great powers may attract its derivative spear of impacts to the regional hotspot where China, Taiwan, Korean Peninsula, South China Sea dispute in the constraint of geopolitical maneuver might have directed to endless fragmentation it might have issues become difficult to resolve by then. Fourth, maritime connectivity disruption. Maritime sphere has become a rising spot of contemporary geopolitics. World connectivity through maritime, however, would be in fracture space as the flow of supply chain constrained by the discrepancy of engagement between diverse philosophical concepts under too risky threat of the U.S. and China technology and economic competition. Strategic ambiguity of contrary connectivity context had made us difficult to link up that will defect global supply chain resilience. However, what we can do to discard all these things is to make sure that trusted supply chain should continue to work with functional cooperation. Fifth, convergence of maritime, digital, and outer space system. To correspond to complexity of geopolitical dynamics, it is necessary to run at the same time for gaining stability by integrating maritime, digital, and outer space system of technology as a controlling instrument of geopolitics. It is critical for technological giant force of such integration in application to attempt advanced resolution of political conflict. Putting the way of such work could emerge a powerhouse of shared commitment to deliver, to deliver for the needs of defense and security in an integrated digital world. Six, how about the ASEAN's role now? In the making of exclusive institutional regional balancing, ASEAN should be reinforced with the more cooperative security and more inclusive institutional balancing. As a liberal or constructivist, constructivist model, ASEAN should emphasize more active dialogue and confidence building measure on preventive diplomacy in resulting conflicts with peaceful means. ASEAN collective regional mechanism underlies the importance of cooperative security, not security against, but rather security with working in parallel universe of which realism going contrary with constructivism. Yeah, I, I, this is kind of, uh, you know, uh, between Robert Keohan versus John Meisheimer. Uh, Number seven, complex, complex interdependence. In the context of sustainable economic development processes, it needs trust 
that we can rely on one another for complex interdependence. The world is becoming increasingly interdependent in the digital information age. Underlying mechanism and processes that facilitate contextual understanding of growing maritime geopolitical issue maintains the integrity of the assumption of complex interdependence, adding an understanding of the nature of content is along with sustainable development itself. Number eight, will it be possible to combine connectivity? The U.S. Indo-Pacific Economic Framework and China Belt Roads Initiative in collaboration of Indonesian, Geo Indonesian Global Maritime Forum will be a way to engage the region, not just on strategic or security potentially hostile basis, but on a win-win basis. But for this, it needs to have a given thought to steer a direction which does not lead to a hot spot conflict. Number nine, geomaritime in geopolitical context. Geomaritime should not be frame in geopolitical context as long as there is a global new trend going forward to the development of mastery of military submarine technology. The strategy to counter such development becomes anti-access, anti-area denial strategy under multi-domain operation or MDO. This MDO was developed to ensure military maneuver are unbreakable and this is the core of the MDO strategy. For Indonesia, however, relying on the anti-access area denial strategy must find a way to have a military that remains free of maneuver or freedom of maneuver cannot be broken by any kind of system. Number 10, last but not least, an option for Indonesia against the uncertain future of global geomaritime dynamics. How is it? Indonesia should take a role in balancing power against China by strengthening diplomatic play without making any geopolitical risk. Indonesia's independence and active foreign policy doctrine will lead only to one policy, namely balancing, in which the doctrine cannot give another option of bargaining only logical of balancing policy. Secondly, option for Indonesia is to strengthen ASEAN centrality. ASEAN mechanism should be pursued to rely on whereby conflict resolution needs process through diplomatic dialogues. Third option will be focusing on low technical functional cooperation between countries, not on high politics, not in highly sensitive issue, but low politics on technical functional cooperation. So ladies and gentlemen, uh, this is all, all the summary which includes some recommendation of our today's forum, which I'm deeply sure that all this uh, uh, summary will promote ways to enhance our global effort to achieve global peace and security, especially in the context of chasing global stability. And it will be an important milestone for global stability that is very inclusive with a strong message as a guide for government to work. Thank you very much to resource persons, speakers, moderators for all your valuable contribution. And I think to all participants for your attention, your kind attention and then tirelessly involved in taking part of our two days forum. So I hope in the next forum there will be a concrete development of implementation of all our deliberation. Once again, uh, thank you so much. So uh, we will see you all next year uh, with the same uh, opportunity that our GGF will continually with uh, progressive uh, implementation and dynamic uh, results. So once again, thank you so much for your kind attention. So uh, I uh, back to Mbak Sarah uh, for the next program. So thank you so much. Selamat siang.